Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, we're getting ready to dive into the deep with some new art while also peeping some fresh rewards on the horizon for those guardians that have a soft spot for Trials of Osiris. Now, before jumping into this week's twab, let's take a look back at last week. Trials community map vote, Rusted Lands, Convergence, and Disjunction. Strand updates for Season 21. Artist reference collection updates, heads up cosplayers. Community artist exotic ornament winner, GG's with or players, and adopt a pet bundle time. Now, for this week, Guardian Games and Guardian Games Cup are live. Season the Deep first look, which includes key art and launch date and time reveal. Details on our three new strand aspects. Recapping big changes coming with abilities, new exotic armor focusing and stat roll details, upcoming economy and crafting updates, a note on upcoming season passes, Trials of Osiris updates, a sneak peek at new rewards and weapon changes, learnings from Trials Labs, updated Trials intro quests, changes to passage of wealth and mercy, Dominion as the new core mode, flawless gilding updates, new emblem reward, and Trials map voting results. Also, new Prime gear and getting our Oprah on again with more wallpapers. All set, let's get started with Guardian Games 2023. Fellas, this is a beefy twop, so buckle up. One class to rule them all or to at least get bragging rights. It's that time again, Guardians. Time to show off that class prime and show other Guardians what you're made of. Or collect medallions because ooh, shiny. We're not here to judge. In case you missed it though, we dropped all the info you could possibly want about this year's Guardian Games right here. If you're in a rush, we get it. Here's what you may have Miss. The spirit of competition is alive and well with that familiar podium and daily Chris scene at the tower in all their glory. And Miss Eve Levante, you simply can't forget about Space Grandma. You know the drill by now? Deposit medallions like your life depends on it for select activities and hope your fellow class dwellers are doing the same. Whichever class has the most medallions at the end of this year's Guardian Games is the class that gets their tribute made in the tower and the pride of knowing they're simply the best, at least for this year. That's right, guys. By the way, we have an optimal guide for those that are trying to get ahead in Guardian games, including how to farm for things like platinum medallions, feel free to check that guide out. Now moving on to rolling in the deep with a season 21 first look. All right, here we go. Who doesn't love a good teaser, am I right? Here's our first look and what season the deep will have to offer starting on May the 23rd at 10 a.m. Pacific. Oh, oh, what is that? Like when I hear the deep, I keep thinking of like fundament, right? And a version without text because come on, this art is dang pretty. Honestly, this gives me like Tower of God vibes, right? Now we've got plenty to share over the next coming weeks and a lot to dive in today, including we couldn't strand waiting any longer to talk about three new aspects. Hey Guardians, Combat Gameplay Team here to spill the tea on the three new strand aspects that will become available when season 21 launches. Our goal with these aspects is to strengthen the existing strand kits and expand the gameplay options of each class. You'll be able to acquire these aspects as part of a new pursuit after visiting the Puka Pond in New Moonus Hall of Heroes. Let's get into it. So starting with the Hunter aspect, Threaded Spectre. Activate your class ability to leave behind a decoy woven from strand matter that draws the attention of nearby combatants. After taking significant damage or when combatants approach, the decoy detonates, dealing damage and releasing threadlings that seek out and attack nearby foes. Honestly, it sounds nuts. I don't think it's gonna do much inside of PvP. Maybe you can like possibly hold down like a zone, like leave your decoy there, and then whenever it does split up into threadlings, which you can probably amp up with fragments, it can go for the kill. Now, piss kick a ball gunfire, have you pinned down? Need a quick distraction so you can revive a teammate? Have you ever thought about what a bunch of threadlings in a trench coat looks like? The new threaded specter aspect for the hunter thread runner might just be what you're looking for. When the players activate their dodge, they leave behind a decoy woven from strand matter that draws the attention of enemies on the battlefield. Enemies will shoot at the threaded specter until it's destroyed or expires, giving the hunter and their fire team enough time to get to safety. And when destroyed, a threaded specter explodes into two threadlings. Threaded specter gives hunter players access to threading generation and a new way to control the battlefield. All right, sounds juicy. Now, Titan aspect, fletch it, storm. While sliding, activate your charged melee ability to leap into the air, knocking nearby targets away and dealing damage. While airborne, activate your charged melee again to launch a cluster of damaging, unraveling projectiles. Repeatedly activating melees will chain additional throws. Interesting. Now, Berserker Titans are known for their unbridled aggression. While sprinting headverse into battle is often the best way to deploy Berserker abilities, we wanted to provide players with a tool that allows for more potency at range and gives Titans easier ways to unravel enemies. This is where Fletchet Storm comes into play. With Fletchet Storm, 
Berserkers have access to a powerful new slide melee attack that quickly launches them up into the air and blasts away any nearby enemies. While still airborne, press the melee button again to fire a cluster of tracking projectiles that deal heavy damage and unravel enemies. Fletcher Storm provides the Berserker with a ranged melee option while keeping with the spirit of their fast-paced gameplay. So again, similar to like Solo 3.0 in our aspect, Consecration, kind of the same concept, right? But with Strand here. The main takeaway though is the unraveling projectiles. That's going to be really juicy. Now, Warlock aspect, the Wanderer. Tangles you throw, attach to enemies, and detonate into a suspending burst. Threading final blows create a tangle. Now, since the Warlock Broodweaver is a Strand minion master, it felt natural to explore additional ways the Broodweaver might weave life into the world around them. Enter the Wanderer, a sentient tangle woven from Broodweaver's brilliance. Now, when Warlocks equipped with this aspect pick up a tangle, they weave the tangle into the Wanderer. When thrown, the Wanderer travels through the air seeking targets. And once it finds a target, it soars toward them, latches on, and explodes into a suspending detonation that deals damage and suspends any nearby enemies. To round out the gameplay loop, the Wanderer also enables Threadling final blows from any source to generate a tangle. Now, the Wanderer gives Broodweavers another way to upgrade their tangles and grants access to the suspend effect without needing a shackle grenade. We're pretty excited to get these new strand aspects in the game, and we hope you enjoy them when Season 21 launches. We'll be monitoring their performance across the game, and we'll continue to balance them over time. No lie, guys, that wander aspect, you can imagine that in combination with Swarmers. Oh, this is gonna be like a continuous gameplay loop there. A Threadling creating a Tangle, a Tangle creating a Threadling. It's gonna be nasty. Now, next we have Stasis Strand and Light subclasses get their glow ups for Season 21. Earlier this week, you may have seen a new blog post from our friendly combat gameplay team. The team dove into ability tuning changes that Guardians can look forward to with Season 21, including changes to roaming supers that we think are pretty spiffy. From fragment budget to a breakdown of both stasis and strand changes on the horizon, here's the handy TLDR for your viewing pleasure. Tuning changes to supers, including a nice buff to damage resistance and damage dealt in PvE, a class-by-class -class breakdown in Season 21 changes, what we're doing to beef up stasis, and how subclass keywords are evolving for ARC and solar players. Yeah, guys, if you haven't checked out our video already, it is a long one, but we went through every single piece of that article, diving into all of those changes. So feel free to check that out. A link to that video will be in the description below. Now, economy changes in this economy? Wait, let's talk about the in-game economy, shall we? We've got a few things to go over, including changes to our power bank, crafting economy changes, exotic armor focusing, and even more. For the first time, we will not be increasing the power band in Destiny 2 in Season 21. Power Floor, 1600. Soft Cap, 1750. Powerful Cap, 1800. And Pinnacle Caps, 1810 will not change over the course of Season 21. If players hit the Pinnacle Cap during Season 20, they will remain at the Pinnacle Cap in Season 21. Guys, this is huge. Now, what this means is that the very first week, Trials of Osiris is going to be launching. And the idea here is that the power grind really just needs to occur annually instead of seasonally. That way, everyone can actually jump jump into the content day one versus going through this power grind to then get to that point. Curious to know what y'all's thoughts are on that. Now, exotic armor focusing and decryption. We touched on this in the past, but it's worth repeating regarding exotic armor focusing and decryption coming to Raul at the start of season 21. That's right, guys. We're going to be able to focus exotic armor pieces. Now, focusing options. You have the standard decryption, which allows players to decrypt Ingrams for free. Players receive random drops from standard exotic Ingram loot pools, and there is no additional cost. Now, exotic focusing tier one, focusing an Ingram to receive a random roll of an exotic from an associated expansion. Red War, exotic helmets. Red War, exotic arms. Red War, exotic chest. Red War, exotic legs. Forsaken, exotic armor. Shadowkeep, exotic armor. Beyond Light, exotic armor. And the Witch Queen, exotic armor. Now, Lifefall, exotic armor focusing will be coming in a future season. So, we'll not be able to focus anything for Lifefall. Now, this requires ownership of the associated expansion, as well as having previously acquired all armor pieces within the Ingram for your class. Oh, so not specifically. You literally have to acquire all exotic armor pieces within the Ingram for your class. So there's still definitely going to be a grind out there for my new players, at least. Now, this will cost one exotic Ingram, 30,000 Glimmer, and one Ascendant Shard. It's quite a bit. Now, exotic focusing tier two. Focusing specific exotic armor for high cost requires ownership of the associated expansion as well as having previously acquired that piece of armor. It has a higher cost here, though. One exotic Ingram. 60,000 Glimmer, three Ascendant Shards, and one Exotic Cypher. My God, this better be like a 69 stat roll piece every time. Now, we've also taken a pass at the Exotic Armor stat packages, 
so your exotics should roll consistently higher stats and with more frequent individual stat spikes starting in season 21 you can expect the average stats to be in the mid 60s all right that's good granted it says the average stats that should be like the minimum the minimum because that is a hefty cost just saying now lastly since we're not raising the pinnacle cap in season 21 the need for many pinnacle legendary rewards has dropped significantly to help make playing in our evergreen ritual playlist more worthwhile we're changing the rewards for the basic complete activities challenges to a focusable, powerful exotic Ingram. This gives most players three to nine free, achievable, and deterministic weekly exotic Ingrams ready for focusing. Ah, okay, so again, yeah, we're not gonna need pinnacles, so what's the purpose of even doing our current pinnacle grind? Bungie's just gonna give us exotic Ingrams. But yes, you will be losing some pinnacle drops, so reaching the pinnacle cap will be a bit slower for everyone. We're hoping the need for less pinnacle drops continues in future seasons, but we will be looking at feedback and analytics and are ready to adjust as necessary. Other sources of focusable exotic Ingrams include random roll drops, season pass paid and free tracks, six paid, two free per season, and vendor reputation tracks, one each reset after the first. You can expect additional focusable exotic Ingram sources in future seasons. Now, let's set our sights on deep sight activation and other crafting changes on the way oh my this is the big one deep side activation and crafting economy changes in season 21 we will be adding the ability to electively activate deep side on weapon instances to obtain pattern progress this capability will be accessible through a new mod slot in the weapon detail screen for eligible weapons now to perform a deep side activation on a weapon you will need a new deep sight harmonizer currency non-raid weapons will cost one harmonizer while raid weapons will require 15 spools of of conquest in addition to the one harmonizer cost now this deep sign harmonizer currency can be obtained from season pass rank rewards three in the free ranks and another three in the pay this will be the sole source of this currency for the initial rollout of the feature additionally only one harmonizer can be stored in the inventory at any time this currency does not stack not all weapon instances will be compatible with deep sign activation you will be prevented from activating deep sign for a weapon that has already had its pattern unlocked Weapons that previously had Deep Sight will be ineligible. You cannot activate Deep Sight on a weapon instance, which had originally been acquired with Deep Sight, nor can you activate Deep Sight multiple times on a single weapon instance. Weapon instances purchased from raid vendors will be ineligible. However, weapons purchased from Xur and the Gunsmith will support Deep Sight activation. Okay, so a couple things here, guys, for those that are wondering what the hell this even is. This is a way in which you can acquire weapon patterns without actually having to get a red board Order to drop for you. So for instance, if you have five Ikelos SMGs, but none of them were red borders, you can actually apply this deep sight activation to them, proceed with the attunement, and obtain progress toward the weapon pattern. Now the issue here is the deep sight harmonizer currency that they just mentioned. This can only be obtained from the season pass rank rewards. And notice they said three in the free ranks and three in the pay. That's a problem because currencies are not character based. Normally, they're account based. So that means per season, you're only going to get six of these harmonizer deep sign currencies, which if I'm understanding this correctly, you can only apply deep sign activation to six weapons per season unless Bungie gives us another way here to obtain deep sight harmonizers. That is very limiting and definitely not what we want in Bungie. I think the idea here for deep sight activation is really for people trying to get old weapon patterns. And I feel like Bungie's more or less looking at this like, okay, you're at four out of five on a weapon and you need that final weapon pattern. Apply deep sight activation versus, you know, you have five weapon patterns you still need to get for commemoration. You don't want to just run in there and waste all of these deep sight harmonizers on just just one weapon. But again, this is a problem for weapons that are not actively dropping red borders like they used to, or at least rarely. Like Igalos weapons are still dropping with red borders, but it is so rare. And by the way, we did an entire video and guide on acquiring weapons going into next season, allowing you to then apply deep sign activation. We even have a discord thread that shows weapons you need to pick up per week from our different vendors. Because again, you can keep these. Like they just said here, weapons purchased from Zur and Gunsmith will support deep sign activation. The idea was to essentially acquire Require however many weapons necessary to complete your weapon pattern but considering how rare harmonizers are i don't know you're gonna want to still be stingy with this guys don't be spinning them left and right at the same time bungie you got to give us another way to get these harmonizers because with the current rollout as it sits if you did not get 
previous weapon patterns in a previous season. At this point, you will only be able to get one weapon per season afterwards for a previous season. Obviously, you can get the stuff within the given season, but I'm saying for a previous season. And considering how many weapons we get every single season, dude, this is not a catch-up mechanic. This is a tease. So yes, this system, specifically Deep Sight Harmonizers, needs to have another source for dropping in the game. I don't care if it's dungeon-related, Grandmaster related. We need another source outside of just the season pass. Now, crafting costs will also see a change in season 21. Legendary shard costs will be removed from all crafting components. Glamour and enhancement core costs will remain untouched. Enhanced weapon costs are based on weapon masterwork costs and thus will still require legendary shards as we are not yet modifying the weapon masterwork economy in season 21. All right, that's a good change. You'll be able to save some resources, guys. And by the way, if you were to do the math right now, and I know I'm still stuck on this whole deep sight harmonizer thing, but if you were to do the math right now, it would take you 24 seasons to acquire all previous weapon patterns under the current system. Good God. Now, quality of life updates that we think you'll enjoy. Coming in season 21, we have a number of quality of life updates we are excited to share with you. First up, let's take a look at raid triumphs. Over the last year, the raid and dungeon team has added triumphs to new raids and dungeons. Duality, Spire of the Watcher, and Root of Nightmares, which gives you a boosted chance to receive the exotic weapon drop for that raid or dungeon once completed. No lie, it's a fantastic change. In season 21, we're adding boosted triumphs to legacy content, with randomly dropped exotic weapons to bring them up to our standard for raids and dungeons. We added them to existing triumphs and are retroactive. So if you already have done the requisite triumphs, you immediately start getting a boost. Let's go! So for Last Wish, 1,000 voices, Petra's Run, plus three, the new meta, plus two, Thunderstruck, plus one, Sunburn, plus one, Night Owl, plus one, and Habitual Wisher, plus one. You also have these challenges right here for a five total. Deepstone Crypt for Eyes of the Morrow, Survive of the Fittest, plus three, Freezing point plus one, control group plus two, the challenges also equaling four, with complications adding another four. Again, guys, you can retroactively do this. So if you've not gotten an exotic, but you've already completed these triumphs, or you're in the process of doing these triumphs, after the new season goes live, you can then do the raid, and you will have a boosted chance of these exotics dropping. For Vow of the Disciple, you have Collective Obligation, Risen from the Deep, plus three, Master Difficulty, Vow of the Disciple, plus two, Together in the Deep, plus one. The challenges also give you plus four, Four, and complications also for another four. And for Vex Mythic Glass, Flawless Vault of Glass plus three, Master Glasser plus one. Your challenge is also giving you a five in total with complications giving you five as well. King's Fall Touch of Malice. This is the one I need, man. I still don't have touch. Crux of the King plus three. The One True King plus one. Challenges giving you five. Complications giving you another five. This is great, guys. This is essentially bad luck protection and it rewards you for completing these challenges, right? Going the extra mile when doing this content. By the way, if you're one wondering what the hell all these challenges are, don't worry, here soon we will have a breakdown on all of them, how to complete them, including challenges for each of these raids. Now, Finest Matter Weave and Rainmaker Deprecation. As part of our ongoing efforts to simplify the economy of Destiny 2, it's time to say goodbye to the Finest Matter Weave and Rainmaker consumable items. Starting in Season 21, these items will no longer drop from any source in the game. In any instance where players would have received a Finest Matter Weave, they will instead receive one Enhancement Core instead. And whenever players would have gotten a drop of a Rainmaker, they will instead earn 3,000 Glimmer. So essentially, the same exact thing, right? Furthermore, all existing instances of these items in the player's inventories can be consumed to directly grant their associated materials. So all existing instances of Finest Matter Weave can be dismantled for one Enhancement Core each. All existing instances of Rainmaker can be dismantled for 3,000 Glimmer. Ah, all right, good, more consolidation. Now just raise the cap for everything and we're cooking. Now Vanguard Bounty Updates. We haven't made wide ranging updates to Vanguard bounties in a while. So we took a pass and make them friendlier. So for daily bounties, existing daily bounties requiring you to get a specific type of kill, grenade, headshot, or any of the special or heavy weapons now require twice as many kills to complete, but can be done anywhere in the game with increased progress in Vanguard Ops or Nightfalls. If you only plan on doing these in Vanguard activities, you should see no change in behavior. We also added a number of new bounties, killing elites, mini bosses, and champions, kills with elemental abilities, with bonuses for killing with a subclass verb and complete two vanguard activities. Now regarding repeatable bounties, all enemy type kill bounties, high, vex, taking, cabal, fallen, and scorn 
have significantly increased requirements, but can be advanced by killing any combatant in a Vanguard activity. Oh, all right. That's good. That's a fantastic change. With significantly increased progress for killing the correct type of combatant, though. We also added one new repeatable bounty, one for getting fire team kills in a Vanguard activity. Now, good boy protocol. Archie is returning in season 21. Oh, now that we found him a permanent home in the tower, we are reintroducing the good boy protocol stat and its tracker and moving it to the account career category. Your previous progress from season 19 will also carry over. Guys, this is our beloved Exo Dog. Now, important season pass info starting with season 21. As our teams continue to invest in crafting compelling seasonal experiences for the year of Lifefall, there's a heads up we wanted to give regarding a small increase in the standalone season pass price, beginning with season the D. Here's what you can expect. Season pass from 1,000 silver to 1,200 silver. And the season pass plus 10 ranks is going from 2,000 silver to 2,200 silver. What the hell, Bungie? I know it's optional, but you know damn well we're spending it every single season. Mother of God. All right, inflation's a bitch. Now, this will be the new pricing for season passes in Life Falls year for those looking to maximize the rewards with each new season. And we'll be evaluating new approaches to post launch content in the year of the final shape. I'm actually wondering what the hell is even going to happen after final shape, right? I guess we're getting a year of content. Now, pricing will remain unchanged for the Life Falls Standard Edition, which includes access to the current life season at the time of purchase. In Life Fall plus Annual Pass edition, which includes access to season 20 and 23. All right, so again, if you buy in bulk or you buy everything outright for the year, that price will remain unchanged. By the way, this is a great opportunity for us to mention this. Tomorrow, we are pulling the drawing for our Life Fall Plus Annual Pass giveaway. There was a lot of people complaining in our Quicksilver review video, stating that they didn't have access to the exotic because you had to buy Life Fall Plus the Annual Pass. Anyways, we're giving away six copies. Feel free to check out that link, guys, for those that do not have it. I think Life Fall is a great expansion, despite Despite the narrative falling short, there's a lot of things that this expansion got right. And then on top of that, you get Quicksilver Storm. So again, link to that down below. Now trials, these rewards are flawless and weapon changes on the way. Season 21 will be here before you know it. And luckily for trial fans, this means new rewards to earn are just around the corner. Next season, Guardians will have a chance to unlock new exotic cosmetic rewards when opening the Lighthouse Reward Chest. Starting with the Hero's Wake Exotic Ghost Shell. Oh, well, isn't that just sexy? The Valiant Memory Exotic Ship. Oh my. Dude, that looks mean. The Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow. I love the scarabs and everything on these cosmetics. Bungie, if you make every sparrow the same speed in the game, the equivalent of always on time, I would be way more hyped for this. But that's not all. We also have a new shader on the horizon called Glorious Patina that players will unlock the first time they open the Lighthouse Reward Chest in Season 21. Ah, uh, look at that. Dripped in gold. Now this shader and any shaders released in the future of Trials of Osiris will be permanently unlocked once acquired. Transmog to your heart's content. This beauty can be applied to any piece of equipment. And just a heads up, Glorious Patina will only be available to players who go flawless during Season 21. Future seasons will see the return of older trial shaders that were previously exclusive to Adept Weapons as rewards for completing the first seasonal flawless ticket. And they will now be fully accessible and usable as on all of your transmog hungry gear. Oh, that is very nice. We have some beautiful shaders on our Adept Weapons. I would love this as shader options. Now, shader name for Season 21, we have the Glorious Patina. Season 22, the Bloodline Feud. And Season 23, the Vizier Regalia. Ah, you can actually look these up, by the way, on like, GG guys. I'm pretty sure they're all kind of like gold, right? Like goldish, which is pretty much in line with everything for Trials. Now for Season 21, here's what's being added to the Trials loot pool. Starting with the Messenger High Impact Kinetic Pulse Rifle. Oh, it's back, baby. I know many of us probably had Desperado rolls, and I'm not saying Desperado isn't good, but you definitely want that head seeker roll. Question I have, can we get Keep Away on it? In my opinion, the best weapon this season for pvp players is the phylotanic spiral and that's simply because you can get keep away and headseeker on that pulse rifle it is nasty it's been my most used weapon at least for pvp if messenger can have similar roles it's gonna be very good also the unexpected resurgence adaptive arc glaive ah yes exactly what we wanted another glaive now the adept version of the unexpected resurgence will be first available on the weekend of june the 9th while the adept version of the messenger will be available on the weekend of june the 16th. Dude, I can tell you right now, trial players are seeing this glaive and are immediately checking out. There better be something crazy about this glaive. Something's got to be special about it or nobody's going to care about it. Now, the following weapons will be removed from the standard loot pool in season 21, but the non-adept versions will be available via legacy focusing at Saint 14. The Inquisitor's Shotgun, which by the way, 
should be dropping this weekend. And the Whistlers win both. Now let's talk about laps. In week eight, we ran Trials laps to test a new style of matchmaking for Trials of Osiris. Overall, the new system worked mostly as intended, but we did discover an issue with the lobby balancer, which was causing high skilled solo players to often feel like matches were stacked against them. For some background, since we moved to using ticket based matchmaking years ago, we have not been tracking skill and trials and have not been utilizing any sort of skill based lobby balancing either. The new matchmaking system allows us to match base on card state and track skill, which we are planning to use for analytic purposes. Preemptively, we believed we had disabled the skill based lobby balancing as the intent of the new system was to maintain the randomized nature of the lobbies present in previous iterations of trials. Unfortunately, this turned out to not be the case and the previously lane lobby balancer came back online as soon as player skill values started to solidify over the weekend. We were able to identify this issue through player reports in a timely manner and we have implemented a fix for season 21 which will override everyone in the challenger pool skill with the same value, effectively randomizing the lobby balancing for all players pursuing flawless. Now this fix will not be present in the week 11 labs during season 20 but we will continue to monitor player feedback on the new system to make sure everything else is working as intended. Now as second issue that came to our attention with the week eight labs was that we did not communicate properly that starting Sunday at reset players who had already been flawless could still farm adept rewards on any seven win card even flawed cards like they could when flawless pool was active for the week 11 laps we will be activating this feature starting as soon as trials goes live on Friday wow so you won't even have to wait until Sunday now what this means is that once you go flawless you can continue playing on the same seven win card for the rest of the weekend even if it's flawed and any win has a chance to grant you the adept weapon for that week. Wow! Guys, you just gotta go flawless once. And I know, some of you are like, Cross, go to hell. Hold up. Listen, it's connection-based matchmaking now. It's not card-based matchmaking, which means it's a little more RNG dependent. And next season, the Mercy Passage will grant you two losses for free. I don't know, guys. It's looking pretty juicy, man. And if it's a weekend like Immortal or something, dude, you get that first flawless, you continue grinding for the rest of that weekend, and you'll get drops post-game starting on Friday. Now, because we have removed ticket-based matchmaking. If you want to help a friend get to the lighthouse, after you've already been, you do not need to reset your card, as the number of wins on it no longer influences the difficulty of the matches you will face. We believe this will make getting flawless feel significantly more rewarding and should help to alleviate the friction between farming adepts and helping other players go flawless. Overall, the two soft pull systems worked well, blending as needed to ensure connection quality stayed high and matchmaking times were fast. And the farming and stop protecting features both also function as designed in the practice pool. For the labs, we set the farming protection values aggressively, both to make sure they weren't and to make sure that if anyone was attempting to farm we would be able to catch them quickly before they could potentially cause issues as stated the intent of the system is to prevent nefarious people from attempting to abuse the practice pool not to prevent normal players from engaging with it if they choose to do so we believe we have captured the data we needed to make accurate assessments so we'll be tuning the values for season 21 to make it far less likely that any standard players get caught up by farming protection we estimate less than one percent of the trials population will even be eligible to trigger it moving forward compared to approximately 5% during the first labs weekend. This should allow the performance-based matchmaking used in the practice pool to provide a high quality experience for all players who choose to participate. Anyway, enough about that. The real question is, what is changing in season 21 for Trials? Glad you asked. Big moves, guys. Big, big moves. Trials, if Bungie continues to do this stuff, continues to hone it and gives us good rewards and continue to make our anti-cheat the best it could possibly be, we We've got a thriving in-game PvP experience. Now, Trials of Osiris, Intro Quest, Dominion, and more. We want to make the Trials introductory quest more of an actual introduction to Trials and less of a do a time consuming thing before you can play Trials. In Season 20, new players are currently asked to get 50 Crucible kills, raise their power level, and reset their Valor rank once. The last step is asking a lot and serves more as a barrier to entry for the mode we'd like. Well, it's also like another wall for cheaters, right? Now, in addition to not really preparing a player for the time of experience that Trials offers. New players are also not given any real rewards for completing the quest outside of Trials access, which can feel bad given the time commitment required to complete it. As such, we have made the following changes to the introductory quest for Trials. Step 1. Complete your competitive placement matches helps to get players introduced to the 3v3 and revive game modes in an environment where they'll be matched against similarly skilled opponents. That's actually really good. Get 50 kills in competitive, okay, and raise your power 
power level. Step two, pick up a trials passage, play a game of trials, win one round of trials, get one elimination in trials. Reward, a roll of the Astral Horizon trials shotgun. Ah, there you go. Bungie's giving out God rolls, man. But let's be real. Fractal Shot is better. Now, with that being said, guys, I like this more. Granted, at one time, we needed walls. We needed paywalls. We needed that Valor reset. We needed multiple ways to keep cheaters from getting another account and going straight back into Trials of Osiris. Now, this is obviously going to be faster than getting a Valor reset, but hopefully, and again, I say hopefully, Battle Eye and then Bungie's anti-cheat is going to pick up on any problems that seep through. However, I've been playing comp here lately. I've been running into more cheaters. Literally just ran into one today. Now, Trials Passages, as mentioned earlier in the season, we are also updating a couple of our trials passages, offering to provide a better experience in the new system. Starting with Passage of Wealth, previously granted increased reputation on wins 3, 5, and 7 on a card. This is at odds with the system that wants you to continue playing on a 7 win card to get the most efficient progress and best rewards. In Season 21, this passage will grant plus 75 rep for every win, along with any additional bonus for your current major rank in trials, up to 150 total. Now, this encourages players to stay on the same card and take advantage of the system granting more reputation for wins later in the card. Now, Passage of Mercy. In Season 21, this passage will forgive two losses if you have not yet been flawless for that week. After going flawless, if you reset your card, it will revert to forgiving a single loss on each card. Granted, considering that you're going to be getting adept weapons every single game that you actually win post seven wins and a flawless card, guys, there really is no point to resetting. Like, literally get your flawless the first time and then you're good. Now, this will give all players a better chance of going flawless for the first time each week and for those players who can go flawless without using both mercies it will give them additional opportunities to play for extra rewards while their first card remains flawless i like it now dominion in season 21 we'll be moving to dominion as the core game mode for trials this is not a change we are making lightly but after several seasons of testing it in the trials lab and analyzing both the positive and negatives we believe this shift is in the best interest of trials as a whole for several reasons first it offers a choice between between playing elimination and playing an objective. And offering an objective for players to focus on outside of kills can allow more types of players to contribute to winning. Second, on average, games are 15% faster than standard elimination games. Why, well, yes, they are. I personally love it on maps where people like to camp. It just speeds things up. Now, the prevailing strategy for most elimination games has devolved over the years to focus on passive play, waiting on someone to make a mistake and get a pick, or just simply waiting for the zone to come up at the end of a round anyways. By spawning the zone earlier, it creates pressure for players to engage and fight earlier in the round and puts extreme passivity at a disadvantage. Now, number three, objectives. Promote more varied engagements on the maps as the zone directs players around the map and establish multiple defined fronts. Most engagements in standard elimination happen at a single central location, generally centered around where the overtime zone will spawn. But having multiple zones allows for different permutations of rounds based on team and zone spawn locations, which makes gameplay less static and pushes players to experience different Different engagement arenas on each map. Now, four promotes a healthier sandbox variety in both weapons and subclasses. On weekends where we run Dominion, we see less consolidation around the general strongest elements in the sandbox, and success is spread out amongst more weapon and subclass types. Now, we've been hesitant to balance parts of the sandbox around a game mode that only rotates into trials on occasion, but moving it as the core mode will allow us to better focus on its sandbox and address the outliers in effectiveness that do exist. And number five, provide provides us with more balancing levers to change the gameplay experience. If a map plays poorly in standard elimination, there is little we can do to alter it. With Dominion, we have a larger number of levers we can use to modify how a map plays to provide the best and most balanced experience possible. For example, in Season 21, we'll be changing the initial player and zone spawn locations on Burnout based on feedback from the first Season 20 Trials Lab. Teams will no longer spawn at the hall inside the East Yard outside. Now both teams spawn between Tumblr and and yard on the east and west sides. And the zones will run down the center of the map at the middle yard, center, and altar. Ah, okay, okay. So you got to meet in the middle. So you're not going to have that same inside outside spawn. Now, having multiple zones means we can make changes to maps more quickly to address concerns about flow or balance, allowing us to better manage asymmetrical maps. Again, I know some of my trials players right now are like cross. That's terrible. Elimination. That's been the game mode for trials since the very beginning. But let's be real. What they're talking about, that path 
passive play is what tends to happen with elimination. Folks, just wait for the zone and then finally push. It's been happening since Destiny 1 and I hated it. I hated it during the scoring meta. People used to just sit and spawn and camp for each other's supers. It was miserable. So again, this to me is a good change. I like the minion. Granted, it really comes down to how Bungie places those zones and of course where they place their spawns. So they're gonna have to pay special attention to the maps they give us and which maps stay in rotation. Now Bungie continues, we understand that switching to Dominion may make carrying other players to the lighthouse a more difficult challenge due to the increased premium place on silent teamwork. But it's important to note that these experiences must be weighted against the bulk of all player experiences in the playlist when we make decisions on what changes to implement. Honestly, as someone who does trial carries, the game mode should never be balanced around us. It should be balanced organically around 3v3 teams. Now, Gilded Flawless. We wanted to make some changes to Gilding Flawless to better align it with the difficulty of Gilding the Glorious Titan and to focus more on rewarding players for their dedication and individual and team skill in the game mode. The Gilded Flawless requirements in Season 20 were as follows. Get 180 kills, collect 100 rewards, go flawless with one of the seasonal exotic weapons equipped, carry two players to flawless, win seven games on a seven win ticket. In Season 21 though, the requirements will change to the below. Get 500 kills, earn 16 trial ranks, so essentially reset trials reputation once, go flawless and get 50 kills with one of the seasonal exotic weapons equipped. You do not need to get 50 kills with the weapon itself, you just need to have it equipped while you get 50 kills. Skill of the one, while on a ticket with zero losses, with the light for the loss emblem equipped, win 20 games. Acquire the following medals, double kill, rapidly eliminate two opponents, 10x, skull breaker, deal the most total damage to opponents in a match, 5x, and the beginning, land the first elimination of a match, 5x. Again, my only complaint about these is I gotta wear an emblem, right? Bungie, these emblems do not mean what you want them to mean. When I see trial emblems, I immediately think the team that I'm playing against are cheaters because cheaters would go out of their way and equip the trials emblem and that was their way of communicating that they're cheaters. They literally like to rub it in. Now, strength of the mini. While on a ticket with zero losses with the flawless Empyrean emblem equipped, win 20 games, acquire the following medals, fly to the pigeon, win a match in which your team never trailed, 10x, paradoxically perfect as a team, win a round in which each player eliminates a different opponent and no opponent is revived, 10x, and time trials. As a team, win a round within 20 seconds. Dude, you gotta be cooking. Now, we believe these changes will better reflect the spirit of the game mode and core competency that is worthy of gilding the flawless title. All right, so it's gonna be more difficult, guys. Therefore, making it more prestigious. Yo, dog, got any more of those emblems? For this new iteration of trials, we wanted to provide a special deterministic reward to allow players to prove their skill above and beyond simply going flawless. This emblem will be rewarded to players when they open the flawless chest at the lighthouse if they did not trail during any of their wins on their flawless run. Meaning, you must get a fly to the pigeon medal for every win. Highly skilled players may be able to achieve this feat on their first lighthouse run, but for others, it may be a significantly more challenging achievement. And we hope the emblem will be something players are proud to show off that they have earned. Oh, that is a sexy emblem. All right, guys, again, to get this one, you cannot go down a single round. You literally never trail in any game and you have to go flawless on top of that. But I must say it looks fire. Now, speaking of trials, map voting results here. Too soon to call now, but Rusted is in the lead. Yes, thank God. Some of you assholes were actually voting for disjunction. What is wrong with y'all? Guardians voted and the results are in. Go out there and make old Saint 14 proud with Rusted Lands. Now, for those personally invested in the results of this, which we get it, here's how Convergence and Disjunction fared in the voting polls. All right, so 30% for Disjunction. Convergence is at 29%. Rusted Lands, 41%. All right, guys, we've got Rusted Lands this week. It's been a while, right? Now, free Prime Gaming gear? Lucky there. An exotic emote, hitting the bag, a Sparrow, a Phalanx, exotic Ghost Shell, with a Pumping Iron Legendary Ghost Hollow Projection. Outside of that, guys, there's a number of wallpaper choices if y'all are interested. Some known issues that are still plaguing the game. Things like Wish Ender doesn't penetrate extended Phalanx or Hydra Shield. That's definitely a problem. Fire Sprites are having some issues generating from grenade kills and Radiant having issues with stunning barrier champions. Now, as a final note here from Bungie, another week and another twa. But alas, our time is in, at least for this week. We'll have more to share on Season the Deep leading up to its launch on May the 23rd. We'll also be diving into more weapon and armor changes, showing off some new exotics for the next season and asking you to save the date for a new dungeon to throw yourselves into with the bandit. Oh, and don't forget to toss a follower over at the official community manager accounts on Twitter and Reddit. Feedback, bugs, and anything at all. Just to reiterate why we are moving over to this account from the initial announcement, this is to make sure our CM team does not miss any pings on socials while also helping the team to maintain a healthy work-life balance. Until then, thanks for hanging out for our 
latest twat. As usual, make sure you're drinking that water, prioritizing that self-care, and always leading with your kindest foot forward. Until next time, friends, I should go love hippie. Well, fellas, this was a thick one. Considering we literally just came off of yesterday's blog post, I was not expecting to be hit with something this thick so quickly, but I'm glad we did. Season the Deep is literally right around the corner, guys. We're two and a half weeks away. I hope you like these changes. There was definitely some good ones in here, especially on the trials front. Again, as far as deep sign attunements go, I hope Bungie looks into this. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Oh,